Hi everybody, this is Big Bill coming to you from YouTube Model Builders. Tonight we're proud to present the second segment of Modeling Railroading Views. Tonight's topic is Youth in the Hobby. Our moderator for this show will be Miles Hale, and his guest panelist will be Ron Marsh from Ron's Trains and Things, Andy Crawford, of course you know from YouTube Model Builders, Lloyd from MHO Junction, and Ralph Renzetti, the Mudfather. Tonight's show, again, is Youth in the Hobby, and thank you so much for uh, watching and tuning in. Take care. Well, the topic tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, keeping the youth in the hobby and getting youth in the hobby. And for me, youth is everything from 10 to 50. So, um, Lloyd, do you have any thoughts on getting people in and retaining them? Oh, uh, sure. It's called <laughs> um, changing the mentality of uh, the way we see things today. Um, that reminds me, when you're talking about young kids, uh, young, let's say seven, eight years old, their attention span is not too long. So if you're going to buy a train set and the train is just going to go round and round and round, at one <laughs> point, they're going to lose interest. So even though they're young, I think it would be the right time to teach them to build stuff. And if the parents get involved in that, uh, that's one way that you're going to get the kids to like this hobby. Um, there's also the part where it's, uh, we, we often hear it's expensive. It doesn't have to be. Um, I mean, you can go to train shows and buy stuff, cars for 10 bucks or a DCC locomotive. <laughs> um, uh, and like, for example, you could buy a sheet of styrene for 18 bucks and you could probably build, I don't know, probably eight, 10 buildings out of it. You don't have to buy um, already made stuff. And that brings me back to the mentality is that today we want stuff that is the latest, newest, and basically most expensive. So that's what we got to change. Um, and I think once we, uh, also, if you're looking at the age, let's say 15 years old, the teens, well, I think it's a bit too late for them uh, to get them involved because they're probably starting their girlfriends, boyfriends. Um, they've got other things to think. So again, <laughs> it all goes back to mentality. Ron, you look like you want to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, um, you know, I, I, I was kind of thinking, you know, two, two different lines of thought there. And one, uh, as Lloyd was saying, those of us who, who are model railroaders and, and have kids, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's almost never too early to start teaching them something about the hobby. Um, you know, I started teaching my kids something about railroading and about how operations work on a very basic level when they were four and five years old with their wooden, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine set. You know, we've had a pretty good collection of that stuff through my three kids. Um, and, and consequently, my kids growing up knew more than any other kids that they knew about about railroading and about model railroading and those sorts of things. Uh, so they had a base. Now, today, my kids are not involved in model railroading, but I have boys that are in that teenage range, and I'm still hopeful that you know someday they're gonna they're gonna come back to that. But if we're talking about reaching new people for the hobby and, and growing the hobby, um, it's not really within our uh, the possibility it's not really within our power to reach those young kids it, it is kind of within our power to try to reach their their young parents so so really i think if we want to grow the hobby maybe our efforts would be better thinking about how can we reach out to some of these young adults uh who are at that age where yeah they may be the people that we tend to think don't have a lot of extra disposable income but they're also the people who uh if they have some interest there whatever they can do, they can also teach their children and give them some basic experience in, in their childhood in, in model railroading. Andy? 
And I Thoughts? agree I agree with both of those concepts. So, one, I don't have a lot of <clears throat> insight personally into what it would take to reach those young children the way I was when I started at a single-digit age. I do recognize that Lloyd has a point that even those of us who, are, who consider ourselves lifelong model railroaders typically took a break as soon as we found out about girls. And there's, there's a typical break about that 15, 16-year-old break until they're mid to late 20s, something like that. Um, I, I seem to hear that a whole lot. Uh, I've heard Lionel Strang mention that on his show several times, that that seems to be a real common break that happens. I have, I have some more insight into how we may possibly reach out or where I think we are failing to reach out into those late 20s, early, th- early 30-somethings. And it, it's partially on the point that Lloyd was making about the encouraging people to build versus buy some of it. Now, I think it might be a little bit much to ask people entering into the hobby to buy a large sheet of styrene and start from absolutely a sheet of styrene. But the idea that you can, that not everything has to be purchased and not everything has to be purchased at the highest caliber of products available to get started with. Yeah. Ralph. And you're probably better. I mean, you're better off at an entry level, not, not buying that, you know, $90 craftsman kit. Cause let's face it. You've never built a model kit before in your life you're going to screw it up and that well, needs we, to be okay so uh you know uh, an eight dollar <laughs> dpm kit is a lot easier to be concerned about messing up than <laughs> you know than that than that high-end uh the high-end structure and there used to be a better path in the manufacturing space to craft a kit for example years and years ago people always said you'd start with the styrene stuff that's my entire life as a modeler has always been starting with styrene and then everybody was encouraged to pick up a $25 cable kit and get started with those. Mm-hmm. Yet I never hear anybody preach about that these days. They're trying to encourage people to buy wood structures. Uh, something we had done early on on the Fine Scale Show was try to encourage people to buy the American Model Builders, BTS, some of the more basic kits to get started with wood as a building method. And that should be not just as wood as a building method, but in the hobby at large would probably be we would be better served to encourage people to start with something that's not lower quality but that is simpler or or is less large of a of a of something that you're biting off get people to bite off smaller chunks to start with ralph i i go back to two things uh when i was young i was eight years old i had no interest in trains because i didn't know I could hear them off in the distance. I could hear the whistle. My dad would tell me what it was. And I had no interest until I found out the guy three doors down the street from me had a layout. Don't ask me what scale it was, but he had a layout and it was his whole basement. And I would kill to be there every day. I waited for him to come home so that I could go down into his basement. And when I finally got my train set, uh, it, my the lifetime with that was cut short because the plywood that I had for my layout, the four by eight, my dad took to make a countertop for my my sister's uh, uh, <coughs> and dressing table and so on. I now have a grandson. My grandson came to the house. So he saw my layout and that's all he talks about is trains. But he's only three years old. He loves coming down here to see the trains go. I have some sound locomotives. But he also has Thomas at home, and his parents bought him the Thomas table. And because he was young, they glued most of the stuff down to the tabletop, and he's virtually destroyed it. <laughs> he's not old enough to understand it, even though they tell him, you know, be gentle with it, and this is what you, how you do it. And they, they try to show him. He's just, it doesn't work for him. It, uh, my parents tried to get me to, uh, I, I always use this example. I was forced into tr- uh, taking accordion lessons. I hated every minute of it. Mm-hmm. You force someone at that age, 8, 10, 12, to do something they don't want to, you'll lose them forever. Getting to the, uh, the older ones, the older kids, uh, 14, 15 and up, you have to grab their attention. We talked about this before. It comes down to the electronics. I still don't think DCC is the way to go to start anybody, except for somebody that's up in around 15 to 20 or whatever. The younger kids don't understand the concept. 
No. And it's, it's a real drain on the parents at that stage. So it's a matter of working into something. And if they show interest, you go a little further. And you guide them along the way. That's the only way you're going to do it. But you have to grasp their interest to start with. And that's where the problem comes in. I, I, want, I want to speak to the, the success thing that Lloyd started off with. Whenever Fran and I do these clinics at the Amherst Train Show or regional conventions or anything else, the one thing we look at with kits, and, and uh, admittedly we have a close association with Wood and Scenics and DPM, so they provide kits for us, so naturally we're going to gravitate that way. But it's a good thing because those kits are relatively simple and easy to do. And Fran's concept from the very beginning about our classes is that we must walk out of that clinic, and we, I mean that the students, the people that come for the clinics, they must walk out of that clinic with a finished building and a smile on their face. Well, you are not going to take a $200 craftsman kit and walk out of it, you know, with anything. I mean, you, you're lucky yeah. if you get a foundation down on something like that. Yeah. But it's back to kindergarten. I don't care if you're, you're four or you're 40. You'll want to come out with something in your hands that you can smile at your significant other, your spouse, your friend, or I whatever with, and say, "Look what I did!" And you succeeded yes. at doing it. And that's that's the first thing. I, it's got to be that stick that hooks the people to get them to come to the hobby. The second thing that I, I reiterated earlier, and it, you guys have touched on it a couple times now, is electronics. My one original saying, I claim it. Somebody else is going to grab it for too long, but. If you're not in their hand, you're not in their life. And I think that's true whether they're 40, again, or whether they're 80. Because you look at grandparents now, and they're sitting at their kids' grandkids' game, and what are they doing? They're looking at their phone, and they're poking around, and they're doing whatever. We need apps. We need Wooden Scenics and, and the NMRA and Walters and these people to develop apps that will hook these kids and get them in, get them to draw layouts understand switching you know we need to hook them at their level and that's where the problem comes in because as ron said and i think even andy touched on it the society has changed the way people think the way people interact they don't go to club meetings they don't go to conventions um, tonight we're all sitting here in this group and talking to each other if i have a problem with a model i'll hold it up and say well, you guys try this that's really you know and the answers are right there I don't need to go to a meeting. I don't need to associate with people other than on an electronic medium. And I think right. we've got to think, migrate the hobby from physical to electronics. We, it's always been true that to get somebody involved in, in anything, in model railroading, you know, in this case, you've got to get it in front of them. And I think that's what you're saying, Miles. Uh, for me, and, and this kind of touches home to me in a little bit, because I didn't grow, I grew up around railroads. I was a rail fan as a child, but I didn't know model railroading as a hobby existed until I was 28 years old. Yeah. Um, you talk about DPM kits. I reached back just to grab behind me. These are the first three models I ever built as a model railroader. Yeah. You recognize you all three of those, don't you, Miles? Yeah, huh? and you succeeded because they were easy. And I succeeded. That's right. And I, and they still they have been on every layout I ever had. But – like, like Miles is saying, if you want to get it in front of them, if you want to get it in front of people today, you've got to do it digitally. And and we keep coming back in various discussions to the topic of of, of social media. And, and I think that is a huge part of how we have to make connections with potential new model railroad people is through social media. Uh, and I started my YouTube channel because... I came into the hobby without any mentor. I didn't know anybody who was a model railroader. I just happened into a model railroad shop one day. And so learning those skills and learning those things was difficult just because, you know, I, I would, could read magazines. I could read books. This was pre-internet. I just didn't have all that. And my desire was just to get whatever I could offer out there to somebody. And I, I want to sh just share some statistics. And these may not... Uh, fit the entire hobby but uh, you know i've got 16,000 subscribers and so that number has to mean something of the people who view my videos according to youtube analytics the largest group is not 65 and over that's right 
Um, in oh. fact, that's the third large. That's the third largest group. Uh, the largest group is actually forty-five to fifty-five. Yeah. Fifty-five to sixty-five is the second largest group. But from eighteen to thirty-five, I still have twenty-five percent of my total views from that age range that tells me that there are young adults out there people who are of the age to have young children who would be of the right age to learn model railroading who are interested in model railroading and the vast majority of the people who at least comment and interact with me through my videos are either total beginners or or fairly inexperienced model railroaders who are just looking for some help and some advice. So I well, think I think the potential is greater than a lot of people recognize. I think there are people out there who are interested if we can just get it in front of them. Yes, we got, we got to be we got to be very careful. Uh, you know, like there's a big problem that we could scare a lot of people. Also, like not like you, Ron. I started when I was 55, and most mm -hmm. of you know my story. Never been around trains, never seen trains, never had a train set. So at 55, I'm starting from scratch. And like Miles says, um, the media, uh, not the media, but uh, let's say Facebook or uh, YouTube and all those um, tools that are accessible, that's the place where we should get all the information. But a lot of those videos are for people that are, um, how can I say, uh, that are already in, um, they're already school in the hobby. A lot of those videos are sophisticated. I'll take, for example, GMRI. Uh, when I started, uh, maybe a year into my layout, that's what I wanted because that's what I was hearing and everybody's talking about it. And you know what? That pretty scared me. And I saw bit, uh, videos for beginners, and it scared me. I'm not very electronically um, able, but we got to be very careful in what we're doing. Uh, if we want to attract people, you can't go. Um, I mean, Ralph does wonderful uh, weathering, but when I saw his first, when I first saw his video. Man, that was so complicated. I said, I'm not going to weather none of my cars. Okay, so there's that scared me. GMR, uh, I'm, GMRI scared me. Uh, everything thing that was electronics. And I presume that for some kids, building some stuff could be also very challenging. So we got to be very careful how we attract the young people, not to scare them off the, out of the hobby. Andy? So, and I may not have, I do agree with everything Lloyd's saying. I may not have a strong of opinion about some of the elements of it, but I agree that we as a hobby have done a disservice to newer people entering the hobby, either just entering or even people who've been in the hobby for a number of years, but have not climbed the ladder of, of new entry to experience or to experience to expert. And we do a disservice by, by kind of shining a bad light on certain parts of the hobby. And that also, uh, you know, to to thinking that everybody needs to be a fine scale craftsman, uh, hand laying track, etc. And that's not at all what our hobby should be. It should be open and accepting to the entire wide range of what experience level or at what level you want to do the hobby. But that comes back to the bigger point that I think you that you mentioned, um, Miles, that that I think nails this perfectly, regardless of this hobby or even in my own personal business. What you do is you've got to go where the people are and we've got you've got to think about social media as being a place because it is a place. It's a virtual place. It's cyberspace. We, we say colloquially, but you've got to go where people are. That's where they are is 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 there. So it has to be modern. It has to be connected. It has to be Internet driven. And that also applies to the interactivity to gamify, to engage with people in a way that 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 we all realize the hobby is, but a lot of newer people don't. The social aspects of our hobby, the operating sessions and gamification of the hobby that is much more than the building and turning a train on in a circle, which is what people think when they hear about our hobby but don't have any experience with it. And it's not at all what the experienced and lifelong modelers think of. <laughs> that's, that's my signal for cut. 
But yeah, I, I think what we want to do is cut this thing off now and talk when we come back here on the next show about the electronics and the influence and social media and that kind of stuff because I really think YouTube, Model Builders, Ron, all, I think all of us have some kind of videos out there on the social media network right now. I think that's where the future is. That's where we're going to bring these people in, the four to 80-year-olds. I don't care who's coming in, um, but I think we've got to be in social media. And I want to address that on the next show because I think I have a little bit different slant on why it's so difficult for us to navigate into uh, that realm. So, everybody, thank you for watching. And trust me, the next show will be a whole lot more interesting than this one. And I hope we really whet your appetite coming in this time. I want. Hi, this is Big Bill. First and foremost, we want to thank you for tuning in to watching Model Railroad Views. Uh, I hope it was as exciting for you and that you got something out of it as much as we did in putting into this. We put a lot of work into it. And we hope that it has sparked an interest with you and your fellow modelers when you're around the train table. I hope uh, it enlightens the discussion with you. We will be doing more of these types of series. And if you have any ideas for further discussion, please feel free to drop it in the comments below, right, right below there. Just drop a comment and let us know what you'd like us to cover. We hope to do this in the near future. And we've had a pleasure doing it. And we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making them. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in. You take care. God bless. And most definitely, we will see you on the radio.